the Jewish community in Egypt in the beginning of the 20th century. The beginning of the 20th century was a very interesting period for the Jewish community of Egypt. This deserves a dedicated podcast just describing the uniqueness of this community, which is very different from almost any other part of the Jewish diaspora at that time. This being the very diverse build of this group, or its segments, which included descendants of local Jews, whose history in Egypt dates back to the time of the First Temple in Jerusalem, or the Book of Kings in the Bible. The Eastern Jews of the Sfaradim, who immigrated here after the Spanish expulsion of the Jews in the 16th century. Jews from other parts of the Ottoman Empire, Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, Italy, and then too the Ashkenazi community, who grew mostly following the pogroms in Eastern Europe in the 19th century. The political reality in Egypt in the beginning of the 20th century. Egyptian society in pre-Pan-Arab theme in the beginning of the 20th century had a great amount of influence from the European countries across the Mediterranean Sea, mostly France, with an influx from Turkey, Italy, and Greece. The British controlled Egypt de facto from the end of the 19th century, which gave reason for the growth of the Egyptian national movements, who called for independence and nourishment of the Egyptian national identity. The land of Israel in the beginning of the 20th century, World War I, saw a change of custodianship. The land of Israel in the beginning of the 20th century. World War I saw the change of custodianship in the land of Israel and the region known as the Levant. With the decline of the Ottoman Empire, the British and French assumed control over these areas, which became known as the Middle East, and they divided this area into states. The area of the Holy Land that would become Jordan and Israel would be placed in the hands of the British until those states gained their independence. Hebron at the beginning of the 20th century. Hebron is one of the most ancient cities in the land of Israel. It is mentioned in the Torah as the place where the father of the nation of Israel bought a parcel of land with a cave to be the family burial place. On top of that cave, to this day, stands a monumental building called Ma'arat HaMachpelah, the cave of the Machpelah, which marks the burial place of the patriarchs and matriarchs of Israel, Abraham and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Jacob and Leah. This city was the first capital of the kingdom of Judea, under our King David in the Bible. This is where his throne sat for seven years before he named Jerusalem as the capital of the united twelve tribes of Israel. Throughout the ages, there was a Jewish presence in this city, which became known as one of the four holy cities together with Jerusalem, Tzfat, and Tveria. Rabbi Eliyahu Meni, the chief rabbi of Hebron, and Judge Malchiel Meni. At the end of the 19th century, there were over a thousand Jews in the city of Hebron. Rabbi Eliyahu Meni was the chief Sephardi rabbi of Hebron. The Sephardim made up of about two-thirds of the Jewish population in the city. His son, Malchiel Meni, was a judge in the Ottoman court, which brought the family to move to Jerusalem some years after his daughter Mazal was born in Hebron. Mazal would marry an Egyptian Jewish doctor, and she is the star of our story. Dr. Albert Museri. Albert Museri was the son of two of the most influential Jewish families in Cairo at the end of the 19th century. Museri and Katawi, both Sephardi families originally from Italy. Albert went to France to study medicine. He was also a journalist. While in France, he experienced the anti-Semitic events around the trial of Alfred Dreyfus, a Jewish officer who had been falsely charged with passing secret documents to the Germans. In France, Albert Mosseri met Theodor Herzl and received from him a copy of his monumental book, The Jewish State. He also met other Zionist leaders. Mazalmeni agreed to marry Dr. Mousseri on the terms that she could learn to be a doctor. 
Mazal Meni was born in Hebron in 1894 to one of the most prestigious families in the Jewish community. Her father, Malchiel Meni, was the first Jew to serve as a judge in the Ottoman Empire, and her grandfather, Eriao Meni, was the chief rabbi of the holy city of Hebron. According to the Meni family tradition, their linkage goes back to the line of King David. In 1901, the family moved from Hebron to Jerusalem, where her father would sit as a judge in the court. She completed her schooling in the Evelina de Rothschild School in Jerusalem and with private tutors. In 1912, the Egyptian doctor Albert Museri came to Jerusalem to bury his father at the Mount of Olives Cemetery. He visited the many home and immediately fell in love with Mazal and asked for her hand in marriage. She wasn't quick to agree to marry the doctor, who was 27 years her senior, and finally only agreed after he promised that they would make their home in Jerusalem and that he would help her pursue medical studies herself. They were married at the Amdorsky Hotel in Jerusalem, with live music performed by the Ottoman military orchestra at the order of the Turkish governor of the city. The move back to Egypt. Only two years after their marriage, they were forced to move back to Cairo because of the outbreak of the First World War. Jews of Ottoman-controlled Palestine were expelled. Many deportees relocated temporarily to nearby Egypt. In 1915, Mazal established a Zionist youth movement for Jewish girls most of whom were children of the deportees and children of the local Jewish community in Cairo. Israel, Israel, a Jewish newspaper published in three languages, French, Hebrew, and Arabic. After the war was over, Mazal expected the family to return to Jerusalem, but a surprise was waiting for her. Her husband, Dr. Albert Museri, had a calling to go back into the world of journalism. He convinced her that by publishing a pro-Zionist newspaper in Cairo, they could be doing a greater service to the nation than simply going to live in the land of Israel. She agreed their newspaper was called Israel. It would appear weekly in French, Arabic, and Hebrew for the better part of the next 20 years. Mazal Museri, a Zionist leader in Cairo, Publisher Dr. Albert Museri died suddenly in February 1933. His wife Mazal assumed leadership of the publication. The editorial board included representatives of all parts of Egypt's very complex Jewish community, Sephardi, Ashkenazi, local Egyptian, and Karai Jews. This was not the only Jewish newspaper in Egypt during this period, but Israel was unique because it was published in three languages, French, Arabic, and Hebrew, which brought its message to all parts of the Jewish community in Egypt, and also to non-Jewish readership. The editorial positions led by Mazal Museri were very clearly in support of the Jewish revival and settlement in the land of Israel, which was under the British mandate. The newspaper also took a very strong and courageous stand against Hitler and Nazi Germany. This was not without challenges in the internal Egyptian political atmosphere at the time. As mentioned above, Egypt, too, was controlled by the British, and emerging political trends in Egypt believed that aligning with the Nazis might assist them in getting the British out of their country. Mazal was actually sued for libel by the German and Italian ambassadors for writing editorials against Hitler and fascist dictator of Italy, Benito Mussolini. The Egyptian government threatened to close her newspaper. As the Egyptians became more and more opposed to Zionism, it became impossible to continue publishing the newspaper. Mazal started to receive direct anonymous threats. In August 1939, she decided to leave Egypt. Israel, the newspaper, was merged with a Zionist newspaper out of Alexandria called La Tribune Juve. Many leaders of the Jewish community in Cairo attended a farewell reception in her honor. She would return to the land of Israel to join her daughter Yehudit and her son Maccabi, who himself would become an officer in the Haganah and a war hero. On departing Egypt for the last time, her passport was stamped with the words, Not to be granted re-entry to Egypt. 
This is David Haivri. I hope that you enjoyed this very brief overview on this remarkable figure in Jewish history, Mazal Museri. My hope is that it awakens interest for more intensive research and publication of scholarly articles. If you do publish anything, please do let me know. If you are enjoying this podcast, please subscribe and share it with your friends. And I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section.